Hello, welcome to Summerfest Online 2020. Thank you very much for coming along to view these presentations. Just a quick reminder that we have a number of exhibitors in the Exhibitors Hall. If you want to go along and have a quick browse, maybe do some shopping, they would love to see you. And a quick reminder too about our wonderful sponsors, Yayo Hemp Products and Butte Island Cheese. They're also in the Exhibitors Hall and they'd love to see you too. If you've enjoyed the show, please remember this is a free event and if you'd like to make a small donation, you'd be very welcome. Please go to the Friends of VegFest page to make a donation. And a reminder too, we have another show in November, London Online, and in next March, Plant Powered Expo. And you can find out all about that on the vegfest.co.uk. Thanks very much and enjoy the presentation. Not going on a summer holiday. There's a virus around every bend, and we care about the environment. So, this is one of my favourite trees in my own private park here. So, welcome to VegFest Summerfest 2020. Yeah! Oh, welcome indeed to Summerfest 2020. My name is Dr. Roger Yates and I'm here to give you a brief introduction to the history of the vegan social movements. So whether you're vegan or vegan curious or just curious, then hang on to your hats because the journey into the history of the vegan movement is full of surprises. For example, did you know that the vegan social movement was born during the Second World War in 1944. The founders of the vegan movement lived through this terrible conflict. It's hard to imagine what they went through. Some said that they found the experience shattering and shocking, and they thought it revealed the fact that humanity was in crisis. Therefore, before the end of this conflict, the vegans declared peace they invited people to include veganism as part of their peace aims for the future because they saw veganism as part of human moral evolution and they said this is a crucial and necessary part of the future. In 1945 Donald Watson, the best known of the co-founders of the vegan social movement, was asked to specify what veganism was all about. He said it was about opposing the exploitation of sentient life. Watson went on to describe the vegan movement as the greatest cause on earth. And why so important? He said because this movement was the only one that could save humanity. Sociologist Matthew Cole studies the vegan social movement and he says that it concentrated from the beginning on intersected goals, the end of animal exploitation and a less violent humanity. He says that the vegan pioneers had intertwined goals of transforming human beings and transforming human society. We do that, the pioneers argued, by altering our attitudes to other animals. That is also the key to human liberation, they thought. The general idea was summed up very well in the 1990s by Kath Clements. One writer who greatly influenced the vegan social movement was Leslie Cross. He also helped to develop plant milks along with an entrepreneur and business person called Arthur Ling. Cross developed a position I call focus and scope. This is a, a important kind of debate and aspect of the modern day uh, vegan movement. Cross said that veganism was about abolishing animal use, but that's not the full concerns of vegans. Cross said clearly that vegans are on the side of the liberators. He says in a vegan world there would be no hunting, no vivisection, no animal agriculture and so on. He said in 1951 that the idea is not to make the human use of other animals more tolerant but to abolish that use. He said that veganism was not so much welfare as liberation. However, Cross maintained that veganism includes what he called a second broad aspect. This second aspect is where the idea of human evolution comes in. 
the moral evolution of humanity. The idea is that as we liberate other animals, we liberate ourselves. Indeed, Cross suggested that the benefits to humans would be difficult to calculate. They're so great. Now, right from the beginning, the role of several women were very important in the development of the vegan social movement. For example, it's quite likely that Dorothy Morgan and Sally Shrigley came up with the word vegan to describe the new social movement they had co-founded with five or six others. Sally Shrigley, along with Donald Watson, had asked the Vegetarian Society whether they'd be willing to have a non-dairy section. The Vegetarian Society refused, and so therefore, within a few weeks, the vegan movement was born. It's often suggested that the word vegan comes from the first three and the last two letters of vegetarian, which has led in recent years to this rather unkind slogan being born. Shrigler became the press and minute secretary of the Vegan Society and served the society for a full 33 years. It's said that she was an idealist, just as with the other pioneers they were called anti-establishment. In a way they had to defy the norms and values of their society because the vegan social movement pioneers they were virtually all told that they were going to die and that was by people like doctors and vegetarians that knew them. Sociologist Matthew Cole says that another pioneer Faye Henderson who wrote some of the vegan society's literature and also toured Britain and Ireland in aid of the cause was the person who originated the idea that we now call vegan education. From 1946, the vegan movement was writing about famine and human food security issues. By 1948, Faye Henderson was suggesting that things were so serious that humanity was threatened. And she developed a theme which was a concern for many years of the vegan pioneers, and that was the quality of the soil. Henderson wrote, Give and take is a good rule in all phases of life, and it especially applies to our relationship with the soil. This concern about the soil is also contained in one of the most powerful statements by any of the vegan movement pioneers. In 1964, Eva Batt produced a booklet called Why Veganism? And she said that veganism was about a way of living which avoided exploitation of human and other animals and indeed of the soil. Modern day vegans will know that the dairy industry want only cow milk to bear the words milk. This was an issue right back in the 1960s. The vegan pioneers were already engaged in it. For example, Eva Batt suggested that uh, the word milk should be used in its technical sense. She even argued that butter made from cow milk should be called cow butter. I'm not quite sure that the dairy industry in the 21st century would go for that either. Eva Buck claimed that uh, products with animal parts in it should be clearly labelled. Anyone for calf food cheese perhaps? You never know. She said this labelling should be the case regardless of whether the other animals were farmed intensively or not. Once again reinforcing Cross's idea that veganism is about liberation and not welfare. By the time we get to the 1970s, most of what the vegan social movement was doing in terms of producing literature was written by Kathleen Janaway and her husband Jack. And just like Donald Watson, they were both conscientious objectors during the war years. It's a bit of a vegan in-joke really to say that Vegan HQ was at the Janaways, because at the time they lived in a village in England called Leatherhead. We get the impression from her writings that Kathleen Janaway had a keen sociological understanding of the problems that social movements face when it comes to forging radical social change. She talks about customs, she talks about the way that children are brought up in terms of tradition and in terms of the values that their parents are transmitting to them uh, generation after generation. Both Kathleen and Jack Janaway seem to adhere to Donald Watson's idea that people need to be ripened up to new ideas, even though those new ideas are tempered by tradition. And Janaway herself 
was very keen to understand the power of the media in terms of advertising as in a way a block to social movement advancement. In 1976 Kathleen Janaway was featured on the BBC in a programme called Open Door. This is where the BBC would uh, allow their resources to be used by social movements in order for the movement to make a film uh, of their own. This uh, film now looks very dated, although it's still available online. In fact, parts of the film were used by comedian Simon Amstel in his pro-vegan mockumentary called Carnage, which was released in 2017. Despite its dated appearance now, the documentary created a huge surge in membership of the vegan social movement uh, back in the day. Kathleen Janaway, like the earliest of the vegan pioneers, was conscious of the fact that human progress, in a moral sense, seemed to have faltered. She believed this was partly due to their exploitation and use of other animals. Janaway argued that humanity needs to end its dependence on slaughterhouses, especially in relation to children. She thought that their moral development and their compassionate development was held back and hindered if their parents forced them to eat animal products. Janaway said that fundamental changes in the values and practices of the dominant world system, which has created a situation in which millions of people and animals already suffer extreme deprivation and die prematurely, is essential. She went on to explore what she called the vegan way and also explore the idea of a tree-based culture with a new group that she formed which was called Movement for Compassionate Living. Now obviously a social movement cannot really function properly if it's based at a person's house. And so this is where the aforementioned Arthur Ling comes into the story. In the sense that Arthur Ling was a remarkable business person and started his vegan journey in 1926. He was also a pioneer in terms of biodiesel and also in plant milks. In terms of what he did for the vegan social movement, he put it on a more sustainable uh, footing in terms of organising an office and staff and professionalising the organisation as it stands now. As a sociologist, the ironic thing there is that if you read social movement theory, we know that when a group does professionalise, then that means its radical core can be threatened. This, to some extent, has happened with the vegan social movement. It's an ongoing battle of ideas, as animal rights philosopher Tom Reagan would put it. So, Earthlings, there we have it. That's something of a whistle-stop uh, tour through um, parts of the history of the vegan social movement. We are left with the picture of a revolutionary group who were really uh, movers and shakers of their time. They declared peace during a global conflict and then they set about exploring what they wanted to do about it and also kind of organising uh, in a social movement sense. You could say really that the beginning of the vegan social movement was rather chaotic but now it's a professional organisation. You could also say that some of the revolutionary values of the group uh, maybe have been tempered over time. And again, that's part of the discussion that goes on within a social movement. One thing that sociologists know about social movements is that they move, they evolve over time. And there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's crucial. Otherwise, they would stagnate. You know? So, anyway... Uh, welcome to the Vegan Social Movement and once again welcome to Summerfest 2020 and I hope you enjoy your stay in whatever you do. This is Roger Yates signing out. Thanks a lot. <laughs>